Adam A. Adams is back with us here now. How are you doing today? Doing well. How are you? I'm doing great again. Now, today we're talking a little bit about whether or not you should bother editing your own show or whether or not you should maybe get a professional to it. So, first of all, what is your advice for, let's say, a beginner who's started podcasting? Should they edit their own show? Um, The answer is always if you can afford it don't waste your time or mm-hmm. efforts if if you have the means to be able to offload it onto another team then you should definitely do that but um because your question is should a beginner do it I, i'm going to venture to say that about six out of ten mm-hmm. beginning podcasters probably don't yet have the means they don't they're not sure if they could justify spending one or 200 bucks for someone else to to do all the post-production on that show yeah so i would just say yeah if you could do it but since i i understand most of you are more than half maybe 60 percent of you are going to have a challenge doing it um i'm happy to kind of share with you some 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 software that we might use or just a couple of tips and tricks that will help it sound more like it's being edited by a professional. Yeah. And most podcasts are dialogue. So it's probably a lot easier to learn how to edit that than if it was a complicated mix of music and things. Because mainly if it's just you talking is editing out all the mistakes, really. A hundred percent. Yeah. And, you know, I like I like that you brought that up. Um, because I think last time I was on your show, we talked a little bit about like the three types of people that you should have on your podcast. Yeah. One of them is like somebody who's brand new because they'll share it. One of them is uh, who he is really famous because it'll just add credibility. Yeah. And then that third person, which hopefully is the other two. So really it's only two people is just somebody who adds a lot of value to the podcast. Um yeah. I also have just some thoughts around um, how you should be publishing your show. And what I've noticed is sometimes you should have guests on your show. And uh, and on the same show, you should also have um, solo episodes where it's really just you. Mm. And so you, you brought that up a second ago. You know, sometimes it's just going to be you. Well, I hope this is tangible for the listener who becomes a podcaster. Eventually, you're going to want to make sure that you have a show where you're interviewing other people, partially because that helps grow your show. Yeah. Um, but you should have some in, some episodes where it's just you solo and adding value. And the main reason that you want to have it just you adding value to the audience is because most of these people that are listening to your show, they're going to do business with you. Yeah, They're less likely to do business with your guests and more likely to do business with you. And so when, when you know that you, if you're just going to waste all of the, the value of having a show, if you only interview other people, you should also spend some time um, doing like a quick five or I, I always say two to 10 minutes. Really what that means is about five-ish minutes hmm. where you yourself are on there only giving value on that subject. And then the other half of your episodes or so, um, it doesn't have to be 50, 50, but the other portion of, of your show needs to be you interviewing other people on a long form interview to be able to dive deep and, uh, and add a lot of value to the audience as well. So, so, but yeah, but back on, uh, back on editing, Toby. <laughs> yeah. Well, how easy is it to learn how to edit for a beginner, for example? The hardest part is super hard. Mm. It's learning how to use the software. That's, yeah. that's the toughest thing. Um, most, so my team, we do a lot of post-production for other podcasters. And so for us, um, we use something called Vegas Pro, which is generally a few hundred dollars. It's not too expensive, but I mean, it's, there is an expense to it for sure. Yeah. Um, it's called Vegas Pro. And I think we use like last year's version, but the point is, um, there's all of these shortcuts like 
clicking the S to split it, clicking mm. the space bar to play or pause, um, clicking all sorts of different buttons, enter. Um, you want to be able to use both hands. So when you're editing, you want your your one of your hands on the mouse and the other hand on the shortcuts so that you can be just going back and forth and you want a mouse. I know this sounds <laughs> random. You want a mouse with like um, on the top, it's a thing that you can like, scroll because yeah. with this one in vegas pro you're zooming in and zooming out and you'll get used to it you'll get used to it and then and it, it won't be anything but yeah. in the beginning like you're probably going to be spending six seven eight hours uh, just on one episode just mm -hmm. because you're learning all of these shortcuts and you don't have them yet once you're really really good um you could end up being around three-ish hours. And for me, if I'm not writing show notes or doing any of that other hard stuff, just editing, adding the intro and outro, I can I can do about a 30-minute episode in, in under an hour, uh, which is remarkable. It's, it's incredibly fast. But um, yeah. you, I mean, if, if the listener, if you can get it to three-ish hours, you're doing pretty good. You're you're doing pretty good. So so the question, how hard is it? It's freaking hard. It's definitely yeah. hard. But um, but don't worry. As soon as you kind of understand how to use the program, you're going to be flying through these, um, f flying through the edits. Yeah, and even if you can't afford a fancy pants software like that, there are some free alternatives that do most of the things that that can, like Audacity, for example. Yeah, and and I don't have a lot of experience with anything but Vegas. Yeah, um, Vegas isn't the absolute best thing on the planet, but it's it's very good, and you you pay a pretty penny for it. But you're right, I, mm. I've heard of other people using Audacity and other free programs yeah absolutely so hiring somebody to edit for you who is that the best option for then well if if you can afford um a two-ish hundred bucks my company does it for 155 but if you can afford two-ish hundred bucks us uh, I don't know the translation in all the other countries, but uh, 200-ish US. That's about 150 pounds in the UK. Okay, okay. Um, so if, if, if that's something that's affordable to you, um, and let, let's just say that most of these cost a few, take a few hours to do the editing. Yeah. Um, if, you're, if your hourly rate, like uh, let's just say you're a consultant, or an attorney or something, and you, you might be charging 150, 150 an hour, or you might be charging 300 an hour or 600 an hour. Uh, there's just no reason for you to be editing your own show. Yeah. Every hour that you're spending editing your show, you're, you're wasting so much money. You're literally just throwing money in the garbage. So if you're a consultant, if you are an attorney, you definitely need to be offloading that onto a team that knows what they're doing and just let you stay in your lane. Yeah. Um, but I, I would say for the most part, you know, you want to offload it, but if, if you can't afford it, then you don't have a choice. You just, you got to do all the editing on your own. Yeah. But some people know what they're doing with editing, I suppose, and maybe enjoy it. And if somebody is fine with editing, would you recommend just sticking with it and doing it themselves? Honestly, no. Mm. Um, it, it's, if you're really good at editing and, and you're a consultant and you're making 300 an hour uh, or a thousand an hour, then you definitely don't want to, even though you're good at it, yeah. uh, even though if you like it, it you you just should stay in your lane. So I would say just because you can edit doesn't mean you should. For example, I absolutely can mow my own lawn. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> but it's only 30 bucks for me to have somebody else mow my own my, mow my lawn for me. 
And it allows me to spend more time with my kids. It allows me to spend more time in a business where I get paid a lot more than 30 bucks. Yeah. Uh, so just because you can edit, just because you might enjoy editing doesn't always mean that you should be editing. I could wash my own car if I wanted to. I could mow my own lawn, but it's just better for me to have people who do that as their job and me to focus on the thing that I do as my job. Now, if you just can't give it up because you think you're better than everybody else at editing yeah. and you just don't want anybody to make a mistake, <laughs> Uh, sure, you're going to you're going to hyperventilate too much. You're going to have a heart attack by 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 sending it off to somebody else. So for you, uh, that person who just can't stand any mistakes from anyone else ever. Um, sure, mm. you could edit your own. But I, I apologize that you're on the brink of a heart attack <laughs> all the time. But um, yeah, for the most part, if you can afford it, do it. If you can't afford it, then you're gonna you're gonna have to figure it out on your own until yeah. until you can. And hopefully, eventually, if you get a lot of listens and you can monetize your podcast, then it will work out being worth your time to hire someone. Yeah, you and I talked about that on another interview that we yeah. were doing, and I completely agree. If um, if you have a way to to be able to just get a sponsor, and we can help with that. But if you have a sponsor for your show, it it solves the problem automatically. So you go from not being able to afford it to being able to easily afford it right away by having a sponsor of your show. So uh, and we can help with with that. We can help you find them. We can help you can uh, figure out how to find them. Um, we can help you understand what to say to them to make sure they they're, they're going to be part of it. And we can help you have a lot of downloads yeah. so that they're willing to pay a good amount of money to be part of your show yeah and not many things will make a sponsor want to be part of your show more than when they hear it it sounds really good and edited very well yeah 100 percent. and do do you think we have any time to go over like a few editing ideas like uh i have like a checklist in front of me of 14 things wow. that we do when we do the post-production for our clients, but maybe I could go over a few of the most important ones for um, for the listener in case they're going to be editing their own show. Yeah, let's go through that just now. Nick. Okay, okay. So the the first thing um, that I, that I want to mention, it's not, I'm not going to be able to go in order completely, obviously, but the yeah. first thing that I want to mention is um, you want to be able to equalize the volumes. Uh, the So your guest needs to be a certain volume and, and the, the host needs to be a certain volume. And the problem is that sometimes when we start to record, uh, one of the pers people have their gain turned way up or way down, yeah. or one person is too far from their mic or whatever the case is. And all of a sudden, it's it, you, when you're listening to shows like that, one you're going to be like turning it, turning up the volume and then, and then being like, well, that's too loud, turning it down. And so that's one easy thing you definitely want to fix fast and right off the, right off the bat. Yeah. Another thing that you want to fix in, and this is definitely my opinion, and this is what we do for our clients. We take out most of the filler words. And so what that means is we allow up to two filler words within three sentences. Mm. Here is an example, a few examples of filler words. Um, uh, okay, so, you know, <laughs> and like, these are called filler words Yeah, where, where we're going to, we're wanting to transition. We're like, okay, so, or we say the word like a lot, or, or we say, you know, you know, you want to take these out yeah. or too many ums or too many us, but here's the thing. We don't take them all out. Hmm. We like to, we like to leave up to two per three sentences because that just makes it sound really natural. Yeah. And really, honestly, when you when you start to, uh, when you don't when you have more than that is what I'm trying to say. When you have more filler words than two within three sentences, it starts to bother the listener. Yeah. The listener starts to get annoyed and they tune out and they might not even listen to the episode. So we take out a good amount of them, but keep up to two per three sentences. Um, you yeah, also want to cut out some. Yeah. Yeah. And that one is one that we would probably keep. Right. Yeah. Because I, 
I haven't been saying um a whole bunch of times and in three, two or three sentences, it'll be okay. So that one's fine because you can tell, oh, he's just thinking. He's just going to the next thing. It's a transition word and it, it'll be okay. Yeah. But if I was, if I was coming up here and, and, um, um, and, uh, and like, uh, um, <laughs> yeah. then you would be like freaking out and we'd have to cut them all out. So, so that's just kind of the example. He'd be like, he doesn't even know what he's talking about. Does right. he? Exactly. And so I do that. I do that because when I first started, I did, I did a lot of ums yeah. and uhs and, 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 you knows, and okay. So, uh, so I was listening to my own podcast and I had, I was just cringing listening to him. So I, yeah. I learned a lot by having to listen to myself because I didn't think that I had the money to be putting it out. Right. So that's why one of the reasons why we try to do it so inexpensively, I, I have so many different things on this checklist that would be valuable to go through. Um, would it be okay if we just gave the whole checklist to your listener? Yeah, that would be a good idea. I think. Okay, uh, I'm going to have my, speaking of um, <laughs> I'm going to have my team set it up so that uh, right away they can send an email to, let's call it checklist at growyourshow.com. Growyourshow.com is our website. So we'll set up an email address called checklist at growyourshow.com. And if you just send an email to that, we, I'll give you this whole checklist for free. Great. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show today for a fourth time. It's been a pleasure having you on. Right back at you. Thank you.